it was a circle, it would be different, but we're going to make it a rectangle. He's making a pen. He's going to divide that area up into three equal sections. And in those sections, you have width and you have length. Now, there's a phrase in this sentence that is really driving the problem. As you read it, what is driving the problem? What is kind of that objective? Maximize the area. This is what we need to focus on. And so, therefore, my second box over here, again, I like to divide up into four pieces to kind of organize our work. Um, I want to write a formula for area for this rectangle. We all know that area is equal to length times width. But it's going to be very difficult if we use two variables. We'd like to find one. So if I have an equation with two variables, I need a second equation. And my second equation will be what? Hint. Four of the W's plus two of the L's is equal to 480. Exactly. Thank you. So there are four of these segments that are going to make up that width. So Maddie said the, the perfect response, which was what? And wait, okay, <laughs> all right, all right, don't want to put words in your mouth. The idea is that, the idea is that th that's really where the aha moment has to come. So we model that for you, and hopefully you'll be able to do it. But now I should solve for L. How do I solve for L? Subtract the 4W and divide by 2, and I get the length is equal to 240 minus 2w. So area in terms of what is the variable I'm going to now be using? Am I using length or am I using width? I'm using width. And it's equal to the length, which we said was 240 minus 2w times w. Yes. Yep. It's you could solve for any variable up there. There's, there's numerous ways to write the equations. So when we distribute, we get area in terms of width is equal to 240w minus 2w squared. This is where it's awesome. This is where I said in my life, calculus next to my wife was the most beautiful thing I ever saw, okay? Calculus is more beautiful than my kids. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, come on. Man. When babies are born, they kind of look like aliens anyway. I mean, they're, they're kind of weird looking, you know? Yes, they, I mean, babies really aren't that attractive. <laughs> like, oh, gosh, I hope I don't look like that when I'm older. Um, okay, so this is what's so beautiful about it. You look at this type of problem. You just think of it from the beginning. It says maximize the area. And here's what's wonderful. The area is modeled by an equation, and if we were to graph that, what does it look like? It's a parabola that's upside down. You're like, well, I knew this from last year, and I knew that the maximum happens at what point on the parabola? The top, which is starts with a V, vertex. And so last year we would do negative B divided by 2A. But no need, folks. This year we're going to do something different. What do you notice about the maximum? The derivative is equal to zero. And so calculus tells us this. Most of the optimal things in our world that we're trying to find are where the derivative is equal to zero. And so we just take the derivative. What's the derivative of 240w? 240. And what's the derivative of 2w squared? We just got to solve that. Because last year you didn't know how to take the derivative. So W is 60. I mean, it, it, when you think of the problem, maximize the area, that sounds difficult, and yet calculus made it a piece of cake upside down. Yes, okay, so D1 is bringing up an excellent point. You can do this another way, which is to do negative B divided by 2A, but that's because it's a parabola. Now, not all the equations are going to come up to be uh, second-degree equations. 
So we could continue. We could continue to to take the derivative of psi equal to zero, whereas before we always asked you how to go to our calculator. So now we can do it by hand, and it's much more effective and efficient. So, anyway, have I answered the question? What's the question asking for? Dimensions, and so we know that the width is 60 yards, and then the length. If I plug 60 back into here, what will I get? Don't give me a number. What what will that number represent? It represents the area. You plug 60, and it gives you area. See, it says area is equal to that. If you want the length, you got to plug it into there. So 240 minus 120 is 120. So again, calculus took a problem that sounds challenging and made it simple and extremely efficient. And uh, it's just beautiful to see that work. That's a parabola, derivative equals zero, connects, got it. You're going to do the second problem on your own. It's very similar to what you've done last year. I just want you to get used to the steps on your own and, and start putting forth a little bit of work here. I'm going to model the problem for you as I set down the microphone just to make sure you have the picture correct. But try to start doing this one on your own. Good luck. Paul, the app has it with you. Yeah. Highly recommend that both of you pop in third hour and uh, sit in the back and do some calculus. Okay. Um, did you come up with 80 and 160? Is everybody okay with that? Do I need to go through the problem? Okay, so the formula is area is equal to length times width again, and your perimeter is going to be 320 is equal to one length plus two of the w's. So then as we solve for L, we get L is equal to 320 minus two w. Yes. No, you just put 80 feet and 160 feet. That's fine. But on the AP test, they will want the label. I won't mark it wrong on your test because I, I know that you can look back and find that. But on the AP test, they will take a point off for the inappropriate label. Okay. And so we then get area in terms of width is equal to, and you could solve, uh, you could put it in terms of length here, but I don't know how helpful that would be. And we get, uh, let's see, 320. Minus 2w uh, times w, or 320w minus 2w squared. When you take the derivative, you get 320 minus 4w is equal to 0, and you solve and you get 80. Is there a point of confusion that somebody crossed that they, they uh, want a quick talk about or question answered? Then we're going to cover one more problem today, and then we'll do uh, others. Uh, tomorrow, and I think we'll try one more on Monday um, that's a little bit more challenging, the famous gutter problem. And uh, But uh, this is one from last year that is not going to be quadratic. So uh, Dylan asked about a quadratic, you know, negative B divided by 2A. That's your option. In this situation, it's a little bit different. This is a great problem that summarizes some things we've learned over time. So we've got a box with an open top. Maybe you remember last year I actually cut this out of a sheet of paper so that we could all kind of wrap our brain around it. But this is, this is about the third time we've seen this now. And we're going to cut squares out of that piece of cardboard. And we cut those squares out. We're going to cut an x by x square. And we're going to fold up the sides. And it's going to make a box with an open top. Do we know the dimensions of the piece of cardboard that we start with? What is it? Very good. It's 10 by 18. What is driving the problem? Largest volume. I want to maximize that volume. So therefore, I should write a formula. Volume is equal to, I have a three-dimension, three-dimensional shape here. It's a box, so it's going to be like a length times width times height, or base times height, which we're going to calculate by doing length times width. So a couple ways to think about it. That's how I'm going to write it. Okay. Those are three variables. You now know that we're going to end up taking a derivative, a derivative with three variables. That would require the product rule twice. That would be a whole lot of fun, would it? So let's write it in terms of one variable. Let's write it in terms of the variable x. What is the length? It's not 18. It's less than 18. 
18 minus 2x. Is that coming back to you now from last year? Because last year we had to explain that a little bit more, but now, now you've seen it enough. Okay, and so then the width is 10 minus 2x. And when we fold it up, what's going to be the height? x is going to be the height. So again, my, I wanted to try to give you problems that you're somewhat familiar with so you can you know, revisit them, but then apply our new rule, which is the derivative equal to 0. Tomorrow, we'll try problems that you maybe haven't seen before, but are still pretty cool. So I have a formula. Volume in terms of x is equal to 18 minus 2x times 10 minus 2x times x. Now, we could either leave it in factored form or we could multiply it into polynomial form. Which one should we do? Why would you want to put in polynomial form? Easier to take the derivative. Thank you. Yes. So we have volume in terms of x is... And I'll start with the 18 times 10, and then I'll distribute the x through. 180x. And then when we do the insides, we get a negative 20 and a negative 36x, which is going to make negative 56, and then distribute the x, negative 56, x squared. And then negative 2x times negative 2x times x will be a positive 4x cubed. Oh, thank you. shape yeah right side up correct how many places is this derivative equal to zero are we looking for the first one or the second one because the first one is a maximum or a minimum first one's a maximum we want the maximum so I'm going to take that derivative and I get 180 minus 112 X plus 12x squared. Great time to pull out our, our calculator. And uh, if you're Sean, you have both the quadratic and the cubic plugged in. You lost it. Okay, we'll do it tonight. So uh, what do we have when we solve for that? What are our two x values? Two point zero six and seven point two seven. Does everybody see why seven point two seven doesn't work? If you cut off seven from each side, that would be a total of fourteen, and you would have a negative di negative dimension, right? Math doesn't understand that you can't have negative dimensions. So we have two point zero six. That's x. Does that answer the question? No, what is the question? How will we find the largest volume? We'll find out V of 2.06. So we're going to plug 2.06 into this. Um, I plugged in the 2.06 uh, earlier in the class. And uh, you can see I came up with 168.13. And what's my label? Inches cubed. So again, in this situation, we weren't looking for the dimensions. Could we find the dimensions? Yeah, no big deal. But let's look. Uh, so that's going to pause us for today. But I will say this. Your, your assignment is going to build on each other each day. So this is just, these are some practice problems that are very familiar to what we did. 4.7, page 283. And numbers 7, 8, 10, 11 and 22. Now, here's the deal. Uh, tomorrow is when we're really going to look at the next example of 22. But number 11, you would be able to do. 7 and 8, you would be able to do. Number 10, there's a little trick to it. So that doesn't model exactly one of the problems that we've seen. You're still capable of it, but don't be surprised if you say, if you say to yourself, this doesn't seem the same as what we did in class. So... You know, it's a good kind of first challenge problem to try. Also, your book breaks it up A, B, C, D, and E, which is basically, you know, like our four boxes. Just do what we did. Don't try to break it up in each section. Just do what we did and answer the bigger question in the end. Okay? Fair enough? All right. So kind of nice. we got two days to kind of get our feet wet with school again. Uh, enjoy the weekend, and then uh, we'll come back. So.